timeline has been placed by the All Progressive Congress APC on the rivalry between the Minister of Transportation, Rotimia Michi, and Senator Magnus Abe. And IPOB is responsible for the attacks in Emo State, so says the Inspector General of Police, Mohammed Adam. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Ann O'Connor. The River State chapter of the All Progressive Congress has given the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amici, and Senator Magnus Abe three months to settle their differences or face sanctions. The leader of the group, Ibisong Muche, said the decision was taken due to the failure of the APC leadership in the state to resolve the crisis rocking the party. He urged the party to allow internal democracy to thrive as only delegates of the party can decide who will fly the party's flag in the next election. And joining us to discuss this matter is Senator Magnus Nge Abe. Thank you very much for joining us, Senator. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Great. Let me just skip straight to uh, the main crux of the matter. You um, have said in several fora uh, that the dispute between you and the transport minister is not personal. You have also been quoted to say that um, it is beyond a personal issue. It's something away from um, an issue between Magnus Abe and the transport minister. But this issue has dragged on since 2019 up until 2021. It's almost three years. So what exactly is the issue and why are we still here talking about the same thing that we were talking about in 2019? Well, uh, first of all, Marianne, thank you very much um, for inviting me over to discuss uh, these and other issues. Let me start by saying that, um, as you have clearly pointed out yourself, there is nothing personal in these disputes. Um, it's not between me and the minister. It's about the party, the All Progressives Congress in River State, and the way things are done in the party that makes it impossible for members of the party across board to be able to not just participate in party activities, but also to be able to achieve the objectives of a political party. The political parties are formed essentially as a platform for the acquisition of power, for mobilization of the people, for mobilization of ideas, and uh, to be able to affect the dynamics of the society. As you would remember and recall, Marianne, we were all members of the People's uh, Democratic Party, the PDP. Myself, the minister, and most of us that are today members of the All Progressive Congress in River State. And one of the major reasons we gave for pulling out of the PDP at that time was that things in the PDP were being done with impunity. There was no internal democracy. Um, there, there was no structure to allow party members to express themselves within the party and be involved in decisions that affect the fortunes of the party. That was one of the reasons why we left the PDP and mobilized our supporters across the state to, form, to, to move into a new party that will do things differently and do things better. As you would recall, I was one of the 11 senators that defected from the PDP on the floor of the Nigerian Senate. And at that time, we were threatened with all sorts of things, but we stood our ground because we believed in the principle of change. We believed in the fundamental message of the All Progressive Congress that things were going to be done better and Nigeria will be a better place when we do things better. And that also involves river states. Now, you take a look at, um, at the state. What was the origin of the crisis that uh, the minister heard that I, I told somebody that I wanted to run for government? Now, there is no politician, including the minister, that, is not, um, talked, that has not talked or has not been talked about in terms of running for office in this country. But when he heard from somebody that I wanted to run for, he came to my house 
and called me in front of my wife to warn me not to run. And I'm like, no, this is not how democracy operates. If I want to run for office, the proper thing for the party to do is to create an enabling environment where party members can express themselves. And that was what uh, we insisted on. Now, when we now wanted to have congresses, the minister called a meeting of the party and said that anybody who supports me is no longer a member of the party. Anybody who is uh, associated with me in any way from that day henceforth ceases to be a member of the party. Now, that's not how, that's not what the constitution of the party provides. But then you went and ahead and had a parallel Congress, I do remember. There were parallel Congresses on the day of the APC's that, that, Congress that, that in was, the state. That, yes, yes, Mary, and that was much later. But I'm just telling you the origin of the, of the crisis. Now, a lot of party leaders across the state came together and tried to reason with the minister that, no, you can't run a political party by that kind of fiat. It doesn't work that way. If there are different interests or different expressions in the party or, or, or tendencies, you manage them and allow people an opportunity to express themselves. He refused and insisted that his decree was final. Now, we had a meeting. When the crisis started blowing up, the then chairman of the party, Chief uh, Ibiam Wekaya, called a meeting of all of us. Then we're about to have congresses. And we agreed at that meeting to resolve our differences and manage ourselves and come together. Everybody was involved in that meeting. And we reached all these decisions and set up a committee to put an end to the whole situation. This thing would have ended. Nobody in Nigeria would have heard about it. Now, Senator Abe, you were trying to give us the genesis of the crisis that has been rocking the APC in River State. But um, in 2019, I remember very well, I was at that stadium um, in River State where the president, the vice president, and APC chief Tains were in attendance uh, during uh, the campaign for President Buhari. Um, you were also at that venue. But then the majority of the people in the party are blaming you uh, for the fact that they were all unable to have their tickets validated by the party because of the imbroglio um, between you, once again, and the Honorable Minister for Transportation. So um, a lot of them blame you for the, um, the woes that the party had in 2019. Do you think that you were responsible for the party tickets all being cancelled in 2019? Uh, Miriam, I don't know where you got that uh, information from the majority of the members uh, blaming me. As far as I know, we have not had any election at that point, so it's difficult to, to say that. But it doesn't matter what people say, because at the end of the day, facts are facts. And uh, you, you, cannot, you cannot change what facts do. Like I was telling you, when we had that and we decided that everybody should be allowed to participate in the Congress. Uh, the minister came back and decided that all those that he had decided to be I think we lost the, the senator again. Senator Abe, can you hear me? Oh, I think we lost him again. Uh, we'll try as much as possible to get him. All right, um, Senator, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I think you need to unmute yourself so you can hear me. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, perfect. Go ahead. Yes, I was saying that uh, we had that meeting and we decided to resolve these issues. Everybody was involved. We set up a committee to do that. The minister came and single-handedly cancelled every effort that we have made and decided that all those who were supporting me or um, involved with me or had sympathy for me were no longer members of the party and could not participate in the congresses of the party, despite the fact that um, they, they had paid for, for forms and the party had collected their money. He seized all the forms and refused to give it to them. And so they went to court. And even when the court tried to intervene, to say, no, that was wrong, you know, and all that, they decided not to obey the courts and announced it on public television that they will not obey the courts. 
That was the genesis of the judicial crisis that stopped the party from participating in the Congress. So there is no way anybody in their right senses would blame me for that. The only reason you hear people blaming me is because the minister had said so. And he is a minister, he is a leader, so people just parrot whatever position that um, he promotes. But power and money or influence or whatever cannot obscure the truth and will not take away the truth. So the facts are the facts. That's yeah. one. Secondly, um, these people, the, the people who went to court to contest and insist on their right to participate in the party activities, which they were constitutionally empowered to do, went all the way up to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court found in their favor. But the party never refunded their money, never apologized to them, and has not made any effort to explain or put anything in place to ensure that people will not be treated like that again in the party. So that is the origin of a crisis. And without addressing that mm -hmm. fundamental way of uh, conducting the party's affairs, there's really no way that you know the rights, privileges of members of the APC in River State can be guaranteed under a leadership that um, acts with total uh, disdain for, for the feelings and rights of other members of the party. So you're, that, telling, so, like so you're telling me, Senator, that the National Working Committee of the APC was in cahoots with the Minister of Transportation to perpetrate these um, unlawful acts against the so-called members who you say they're... Their they are not so-called. Okay, they, they are, are still members. members. Of the party. They're still they members of the party. So you're they saying were that officers of the these, party. Yes, yeah, so you're saying the National Working Committee worked with the the transport minister to um, make these people or rip them off in terms of the opportunity to run favorably and you know either pick the tickets or lose. So you're saying that they were not given an opportunity and the National Working Committee was a party to this? What I'm saying, Miriam, is what I'm saying. What you are saying is what you are saying. But what I'm you just said that the national you're saying to, that I'm the coming. party just did allow, not allow me to. I, I just want to make it clear. So Let's just be clear. It, Are you saying that because you just said that there was no uh, there was nobody who was apologized to their monies were not returned, but these monies were given to the party and the National Working Committee is supposed to be overseeing all of these things that happened within your party. Was there a memo? Was there anything from the National Working Committee to deal with the grievances? of these party members? Well, several committees were, were set up. Um, the South-South Zonal chairman of the party led a committee to the state at that time and met with all the parties and heard the grievances and complaints of members. And uh, when he tried to... Um, when we, the, the outcome of his report was never saw the light of day. Another committee called the Arik Beshola Committee was also set up. We went before the committee and we all made our presentations. And the report of that committee also never saw the light of day. So clearly, whatever may be the situation, nothing was done to address those issues within the party. And that way of conducting the party's affairs uh, continued, to, continued to show in everything that we're doing. Okay, after the Supreme Court's judgment, the minister has gone ahead to announce that the governorship ticket of the party has been zoned to the River Rhine. How do you take such a decision without consulting other stakeholders and interest groups in the party? But this is already in the public domain that that is what the leader has said, and that is what he's going to do. So you, you, that, that kind of politics does not allow for the full participation and involvement of other critical stakeholders, and it will lead to failure. Let me say this. Since the APC was established in River State, the area where the party has made its most and its best electoral impact has been in the River Southeast Senatorial District. So how do you, in taking a decision, you don't even consult those that, the majority of those who voted for the party. How does that work? Hmm. So as long as these issues are not resolved, people are not involved, people are not consulted, their rights are not respected, and there is no organized system within the party for listening to other voices and accommodating other other voices within the party. It will be difficult to, 
to find a solution that would work for the majority of the members of the All Progressives Congress uh, in River State. I think that's the, the root of the problem. Okay, um, with all of this that's happened, I, I remember starting um, this conversation, I did say that this- We accept the judgment. We, we talked about it in 2019, and now we're here in 2021. There are people who would have left the party because of all of these grievances and the fact that you have said over and over again that people's voices are not heard or are not allowed to be heard. People are not being carried along. So the question is, and I'm not in any way trying to put anything in your head, but why are you still in the APC if you're so aggrieved and your rights have been trampled on for so long? Uh, Marianne, it's, it's not about me. It's about Nigeria. It's about democracy. It's about the people of River State. It's about members of the party who have invested so much hope, pain, sacrifice in trying to bring the APC to life in River State. Let me say this. That's what everybody keeps expecting. Okay, you're in a party, you don't agree with the leadership, you port to the next party. But how does that solve that problem? The reason why we left the PDP was because we were going to come to the APC to make things better. How do we make things better if we don't fight to make things better? How do we make things better if we don't make effort to see that things are made better? There is no way that um, you can improve on, on something without effort and without sacrifice. So to me, I see what the members of the party in River State have gone through. I see the hope they have invested in this party. And I know for a fact that if we do things right, this party stands a very, very, very good chance of um, effortlessly making significant impact in the electoral uh, uh, issues in, in River State. We have the capacity, we have the membership, we have the popularity, but people are not allowed to be involved in taking decisions on, on behalf of the party. I think that um, these are the, the, the challenges that uh, we're, we're facing within the APC and these issues need to be addressed so that the party can move forward. Talking about doing things right uh, for the party's sake, as we speak, I know that there has been a two factions in the APC, even though uh, members of the party, uh, especially those who support the transportation minister, would disagree that there are two factions. But we all know that there have been people who support you on one side and people who support the transportation minister on one side, and there have been different leaders and there's been a dragging court case and recently um you uh, seem to have congratulated them uh, or the other faction uh, as to the results of the court cases and you said that you know you were going to embrace peace and uh, move forward but that doesn't seem to be the case is has there been a form of um bringing everybody to the table, has there been a fora where you and the transportation minister and all the people in the two factions coming to a table to have a conversation as to how the party's future will pan out? No, we have not, uh, we have not had any such uh, meaningful engagement. And uh, while we were busy trying to put together the dynamics for um, an engagement at that level, because there's been a series of engagements. We've set up committees, we've met amongst ourselves. There's really no problem uh, among members of a party. We, 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 we cross-ventilate cross, uh, across different uh, fora and platforms, and even members of a party have set up committees among themselves um, to, to resolve these uh, issues, which are easy to resolve. All people are saying is that there must be assurances, there must be a way of running the party that will enable the, 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 the voices and the feelings and the rights of members within the party to be respected and accommodated. Without it, it's impossible for the APC to make any kind of electoral progress as far as River State is concerned. And let me say this, uh, Marian, you will recollect that in every election that has been conducted so far, in River State, in which the APC has uh, participated, the best electoral results of the party has always been from the River South East Senatorial District. So you don't go to you, you, your base, which is the base of the, the, the APC in River State anyway. You don't go to your base and decapitate the base. That's not how politics is done. Hmm. And people across, leaders across the party 
have expressed concern that, listen, playing this game this way will not get us anywhere. You know, so, you so must take people's uh, <laughs> rights and feelings into consideration. I think that's just what the problem is about. As long as the party does not do that, the party fails to do that, the party will not respect the, the rights of its members and will not treat them with dignity and respect. I really don't see any headway uh, in the politics of the APC. In so, so you sound personally aggrieved because I know that you represented the southeast, uh, southern, southeastern part of the state uh, at the Senate. And of course, that's your base. You seem... You sound more like the people of that axis have been totally disenfranchised. But I want to ask you a personal question, because recently you were also quoted to say uh, that the um, transportation minister uh, is leading or deceiving the people of the APC in River State. So I want to ask you, what is your relationship as we speak with the transportation minister? Uh, Miriam, uh, our relationship is not relevant to the future of the well, party. Well, you're talking about moving the because, party forward uh, the, the, and, and the, constitution, the future of the, the APC, constitution of course, does not it does matter. The constitution of the party, sorry? But you're talking about moving the party forward and, you know, mending walls. Of course, that relationship does matter if you have to push ahead, doesn't it? Uh, the, 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 the most important thing that I think we need to do within the party is to, first of all, respect the rules of the party itself. All of us, myself, the minister, all of us must respect the rules of the party. And we must respect the members of the party. Because at the end of the day, they are the, they, 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 they are the reason why the way there is a party. So if we respect our own rules and we respect the rights of our members... I really don't see what any personal relationship between me and the minister, how much impact that will have on the fortunes of the party, if as long as the party is moving yeah. according to its rules if and its to, own law. If you were but to, where we I'm, sorry to be, I'm sorry to speak over you, Senator. I'm sorry about the that. rights of members, uh, it's difficult to, to context. Even if we're, we're the best of bodies, I don't think that that will solve the problem, except we solve the problem. So... To self-examine yourself, I mean, if the minister was here, or if he were here, I would ask the same question. To self-examine yourself and score yourself, have you, in your own way, respected the rights of your party members, uh, especially when we know that there's been a faction, you've held parallel primaries, and I'm not in any way trying to play judge or jury, but I'm asking, if you were to take a self-examination, have you respected the rights of the people in your party? I have. Um, what I have done is to stand with those who have been uh, very badly treated in the party, those whose sacrifices have been rubbished, those who have been, been treated as if they are nothing, despite the fact that um, they practically laid down their lives for the, the progress of, uh, of, of this party. So standing by them, uh, to me, is standing by the party, because at the end of the day, where the truth lies is where the future lies, and that's where progress lies. So I think that uh, what, what we have done in, in, in this struggle is a significant statement for, for the rights of uh, ordinary members of, of any political party. And if the APC were to, take, were, to, were to take correction from the things that have happened in River State, it will help uh, the politics of Nigeria, not just in River State, but um, across the entire country. And I think that at the end of the day, without really addressing the challenges of uh, internal uh, democracy and respect for the rights of members of political parties in this country, I really don't see that our politics will be able to impact so much on, on, on the common man. Because at the end of the day, it is the politics that drives everything else. So we really need to get the politics right. And... Um, one, one of the ways we can do that is to respect our rules and adhere to the strict tenets of uh, internal democracy in our political organizations. I think that's what this whole struggle is about. And I believe that um, if we make, make very good headway in trying to bring about the change that we promised to, to reverse people, if we ourselves embrace that change, if we act with the, with the knowledge that we can no longer do things the way we used to do them, I think the broad majority of, uh, 
of the members of not just the APC or the reverse people will be very happy with us. And that will help us to make headway, regardless of which uh, faction you belong to. I believe that the innermost desire of all members of the APC is to have a party in which they are respected and their feelings are taken into consideration. One thing you must remember is that when you're not in power, when you don't have uh, resources, when you don't have control, when you cannot give uh, appointments and all that, people may not necessarily um, publicly agree with what you say. But that does not mean that they don't agree with what you're saying uh, behind. And are you insinuating that there are people succeed. in the minister's camp that agree with you privately uh, in the moves that you have made? Let's not also forget that the, the minister's faction of the party are saying that they will not participate in the uh, local government elections coming up in River State. But your faction is saying that they are ready to participate. And let's remind our viewers that there have been 23 local government um, chairmen and councillors that have been disenfranchised um, for years now, and that matter is still in court. So is it really the right step in the right direction for your faction to want to go through with that election? First of all, if you recall, during the last elections, th this uh, so-called uh, disenfranchised uh, members of the APC from the last election were still in court when the minister himself announced that as soon as... Uh, his party then, the AAC, wins the elections, there will be local government elections. So he had already accepted that reality that there will be local government elections, and he was planning to at conduct... What point, at what uh, point, I'm, so, I'm sorry, elections. Senator, at what point did the minister become a member of the AAC? He sponsored a candidate for the AAC in the last elections. I'm sure you remember that. Does that there was no alliance the between party? the AAC and uh, the APC as far as Nigeria was concerned. I wasn't aware of it. But he went into a partnership with the AAC and mobilized uh, members of our party to join the AAC, which they did en masse, and worked with the AAC. And they lost. The, the point I'm trying to make is that at that point, he himself had already announced that there will be local government elections. So if now local government elections are being held and uh, party members want to uh, participate in the local government elections, if you see the level of mobilization that they've been able to achieve, you'll be amazed at what it can happen at the grassroots. And then to just uh, summarily, without consultation, without discussion, uh, as soon as they won the, the Supreme Court judgment, the first thing they did was to uh, disenfranchise their own members who were gearing up to participate in the state local government elections without any discussion or consultation or uh, seeking any kind of accommodation for them within whatever it is that they, they have in mind. So to bring the excuse that they are doing this because uh, um, members of the APC uh, were, were still in court, it's, it's, not, it's not correct. Because before that one, they themselves had already announced that there will be local government elections. Okay. So why do you take one position when it suits you and then you reverse it immediately, it doesn't suit you? Finally. I don't think that treating members of the party that way we help to bring peace within the party. Finally, before I let you go, um, I mean, I, I, the one question I would want to ask the Transportation Minister is why uh, it's so difficult to just drop this and create, uh, you know, a pathway to progress for the APC because it seems like the APC and River State have been at a standstill since 2019. Apart from you continuously saying that the rights of the people have to be respected, is there a future for the APC in River State going forward? 2023 is in the horizons, of, obviously. Um, if there be any hope for the APC, how do you intend to achieve this? Uh, Maria, that was why uh, as soon as uh, the Supreme Court gave judgment in favor of the minister's faction, I personally issued a statement um, directing our members to stop all further litigation and create a pathway for peace in the party. But um, the, 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 the basic truth is that without addressing the origin of this uh, crisis and without addressing the kind of behavior and attitude that continues to spiral um, the, the party in different directions, it will be very difficult for us to be able to move forward. We ca I can be in a party, for example, and then I put on the radio and I hear the leader of the party announcing a zoning in the party 
I wasn't consulted. I wasn't given any opportunity to to express myself. There are no formal structures of the party with which members were consulted and with which uh, such issues were discussed. And then somebody has already reached a conclusion. How do we belong to a party that can act that way? So all these are examples of what impunity can cause within the party. Okay. And when you do these things and people react to them, then they are bad people, they are pulling the party backwards. No, we are pulling the party forwards okay. by insisting that the right things are done and not just done, but done properly. I think that if we do the right things and do them properly, the party will be able to make a headway in River State. There's nothing personal in this. Well, I want to say thank you to you, Senator Magnus Ngay Abe, for speaking with us on the show this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Senator Magnus Ngay Abe used to be a senator representing the southeastern part of River State. We'll take a short break after this conversation. And when we return, the former IGP Mohammed tells us who is responsible for the attacks in Imo State. And we hear from Governor Hope Uzodima of Imo State, who speaks about the occurrence. And right after that, we'll be speaking with the Chief Press Secretary. This level of gangsterism that often takes life is not acceptable by any government. After all, what is government? Government, the primary purpose of government is the protection of lives and property. And I don't think that there will be any reasonable government that will sit back, watch this type of thing happen, without taking drastic uh, measures to address them. So we already know the activities of these hoodlums is uh, becoming on the, coming on the increase. And the government will rise to the occasion. Security agencies will provide the appropriate synergy and will also rise to the occasion and ensure that this thing is brought to an end. Last count, what I know is a total 1,800 and something inmates in the facility. Uh, some of them were released. Most of them are coming back. I'm sure the authorities are still working to take a complete enumeration of those people that came back those people that were rearrested, and then those people that escaped. Once the records and everything is proper and available, I'll make it known to you.